I love the idea of having a really small camera accessible at all times. You just never know when you'll need one. I picked up the GoPro Hero 11 Mini, it was awesome, but it wasn't quite what I wanted. I picked up the DJI Action 4, it was awesome, and I really like it. So I figured, you know what, just kind of out of curiosity, it's kind of a not a good financial decision, but let's pick up an Action 2. It's slightly older, smaller sensor, that sort of thing, but... It's really, really small, and you can get these things fairly cheap now. I think this was a little over 200 bucks. This is the one with the uh, the battery attachment. Let's get this thing out of the box and let's check it out. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's not. I mean, it's... Oh, jeez. So the battery seems to be... Actually, it's about the same size as the camera. This thing's actually pretty cool. I mean... I was actually shocked to see that it had a, a little screen on the back of it. This is like the ultimate little pocket cam. If it looks half as decent as the Action 4, this is probably the ultimate little pocket camera. I can't wait to get this thing out and really check it out and see what it does. Looks like we got a USB cable in the box. We got another uh, adapter. We think this is probably the lanyard thing and some silica gel that I'll eat later. I'm excited. It's been a few days since I unboxed it. My experience has been pretty good. Before I get into some testing I've done with it, I want to say that um, I've got two cameras here. One of these is an Action 4, and the other one is the Action 2 that we are you know, talking about here. Obviously, the Action 2 is an older camera, so it's going to be a little worse. You should be able to tell which one's which as I flip through them. Is there a difference? Well, I'm, I haven't actually looked yet, but... I assume there's gonna be. So let's do some, let's run through some test results real quick and then we'll go from there. Standalone battery discharge testing. Basically, I just wanted to see what the performance of this camera is without the battery module attached. Because I'm not gonna use it with the battery module because I don't know, it just seems kind of stupid. I guess, you know, especially when I have the Action 4. So, 1080p, 30fps, long player, power module, whatever their low power 1080, uh, you know, option is. It went for 56 minutes, no overheating, mildly warm, battery completely drained. Then I, it, then I tested 1080p 30, uh, non-power saving. It did 37 minutes, no, no overheating, the camera was very hot, and the battery was completely drained. 2.7K 30. Uh, it did 34 minutes, no overheating, too hot to hold, and the battery was completely drained. 4K30, 31 minutes, no overheating, too hot to hold again, battery drained completely. 4K60, 8 minutes, overheated, 66% battery remains. So 4K60, not really an option in my opinion. I've been mainly using this in 4K30. I haven't been using it in long continuous bursts. This is just kind of a, oh, it's in my pocket and let's pull it out and shoot real quick because you just push the button and it turns on and it's great. So let's talk, uh, what does it do with the, the battery or the power module? Well, I tested a couple just because I did the 1080p power saving uh, option, 108030, and I got 156 minutes. So if you need something that's going to last a while, that's no joke. Uh, max record time with battery attached, 2.7K30, it only did 100 minutes, which my furnace just kicked on. One sec. It only took two minutes and the furnace shut off. It was great. I enjoyed just sitting here with my thoughts. That's camera A. That's the action two. That's camera B. That is the action four. My experience with the action four has been pretty positive in low light, but I wanted to do low light to just kind of hopefully exacerbate the difference between these two cameras because I... I haven't seen where the Action 2 does too bad in low light, but I think it does look worse than the Action 4. And I, I wanted to put it in a situation where you can kind of differentiate the two. You get out in, in the open with good light and whatnot, it seems like they're both pretty good. They're definitely made by the same company. The, the microphones are tuned very similar, similarly, although I do still prefer the Action 4, which for what I hope is obvious reasons. And I think the color looks about the same. The dynamic range, on the other hand, which again, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, so I can't say this definitively, but the Action 4 does appear to have more dynamic range. I still think the Action 4 breaks right just barely out of that, that action camera look, whereas when I look at the Action 2 and I listen to it, the Action 2 does still have that action camera look and feel and sound. But just, just 
barely. It's like it's a, there's a fine line there. The Action 4 is on one side and the Action 2 is on the other. They're both great cameras. I can't wait to spend another week or so with it and give you my final thoughts. It's been another couple days and I feel like I'm at the point with this camera where I pretty much know what it's about, what it's good for, how it acts. Look, this is a very stable camera. It's a very efficient camera. It's... It's... For what it is, it's pretty great. The video quality, in most cases, super acceptable. You can see a lot of micro detail behind me. The audio quality, also pretty good in most cases. But the video and the audio quality is not as good as the Action 4. Which, I mean, this is a couple generation old camera at this point. But it's very unique, and I don't know, I've been struggling with it a little bit. Because it's, gr it's the compact size, it, it's always been in my pocket. Since I got it, it's been in my pocket. It's great. I don't have to carry around the battery pack. It's got a screen on the back for easy manipulation of settings or framing if I'm just hand-holding or something. It's great. I've been using this a lot for personal reasons. I love having a camera, a nice wide-angle camera, in my pocket and around at all times. I, I usually keep up to date with the latest phones just because I like having a, a decent camera in my pocket at all times. And I think the Action 2 has become my favorite personal use camera. You can set this thing on anything, right? Like, I'm just out here in the woods, I've got this sitting on a limb, and it's so small that it ain't going nowhere. It's got plenty of footing. It's got plenty of grip. It's so damn versatile. But because of the lower video quality and the lower audio quality, would I ever put this in one of my main productions, if you could even call them that? Probably not. I think it's a little below that bar. I don't see a situation in which I would use this camera over the Action 4. The Action 4 is freaking great. I love it. I don't see a situation in which I would use this over my phone. Maybe for stealth reasons, because I can turn off the flashing LED and turn off the screen on the back and it's so tiny and doesn't really look like a camera to most people. Other than stealth, I don't think it has a lot going for it. So like, from a, I like to create you know, sort of uh, short films and projects, documentary style projects and stuff like that. If I lost this or broke it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace it. I just don't see this as a, as a pivotal tool. It's one of those things where it's really cool every now and then, kind of like a 360 camera. But at least a 360 camera has a very unique perspective. When you need a 360 camera, you really need a 360 camera. There isn't a lot of situations where you need a really tiny pocket action camera. You know, you just, if they don't, they don't come up that much. So from that perspective, no, I, I don't think I would buy another one of these. But from a, I want a fairly decent quality, wide angle, durable, rugged camera, just for personal reasons on me, it's kind of great. I don't know if I can answer that yet. The answer would be maybe. I might replace it. I might buy another one if it breaks. But it's going to be heavily determinate on how long it lasts. You know, if I go a year without any problems and then I break it, well, maybe I'll go find another one. I don't know. It's not something I would recommend, though, unless you specifically need something really small. Like, this would probably be really good for, like, FPV drone stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Pretty cool camera. I'm glad I bought it. I'm not sure I'd buy it again, though. I won't know that for quite some time. Gets a thumbs up, though. Yeah, and with that being said, I'm not sure there's anything else I want to cover with this. It's a great little camera. It kind of is what it is. It's really small. It's really good at being really small. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.